In a previous video, we showed how to calculate the enthalpy of reactions by using enthalpies of formation of the species participating in the reaction. Here we'll investigate an alternative approach to calculating delta H of reaction when enthalpies of formation are not available. We'll start with a container of carbon monoxide gas and oxygen gas, and our goal is to produce carbon dioxide. The actual microscopic process by which this reaction takes place is rather complex, but let's propose a more naive way that the reaction could occur. Let's imagine that the reaction takes place in two steps. In step one, all of the bonds in the reactants break, leaving nothing but individual gas phase atoms floating around. In step two, we'll rearrange and assemble new molecules from these gas phase atoms. If that process sounds ridiculous, that's okay, because it is. The reaction does not take place in this manner. But that doesn't matter if all we want to do is compute the delta H of the reaction. Since enthalpy is a state function, we can propose any crazy pathway we want and the delta H for the reaction will be the same as the actual microscopic process. Let's jump in. We said that the first step of our crazy process is to break apart all of the bonds making gas phase atoms. What do you predict about the delta H of this step? To break bonds, energy is required, which means that energy is absorbed. Step 1 is very endothermic. In this reaction, we break two carbon-oxygen triple bonds and one oxygen-oxygen double bond. The energy per mole required to break a bond is called the bond enthalpy. For an oxygen-oxygen double bond, the energy required is 502 kilojoules per mole. That means that if we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen molecules, and we want to break those up into 12.044 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen molecules, it will cost us 502 kilojoules. What do you predict is true about the bond enthalpy of the carbon-oxygen triple bond? Triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, so we expect it to cost more energy to break apart one mole of carbon-oxygen bonds. The bond enthalpy of a carbon-oxygen triple bond is 1,072 kilojoules per mole. That means that the energy of the first step, the bond breaking step, is equal to two times the bond enthalpy of the carbon-oxygen triple bond plus the bond enthalpy of the oxygen-oxygen double bond. The delta H of this step is equal to 2,646 kilojoules per mole. The second step of our crazy process is to reassemble molecules from our gas phase atoms. What do you predict about the delta H of this second step? Breaking bonds costs energy, so this process is endothermic. So making them releases energy. This process is exothermic. In step two of the reaction, we are making four carbon-oxygen double bonds. If you try to look up a table of the energy released in the making of bonds, you won't find the table. That's because making and breaking bonds are opposite processes, and so the energy released in making a bond is the opposite sign of the energy to break that bond, the bond enthalpy. The bond enthalpy of the carbon-oxygen double bonds in carbon dioxide is 799 kilojoules per mole. That means that it would take 799 kilojoules to break 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon-oxygen double bonds, which means that 799 kilojoules of energy are released when that many bonds are made. That means that the energy of the second step, the bond-making step, is equal to negative 4 times the bond enthalpy of the carbon-oxygen double bond. This is equal to minus 3,196 kilojoules per mole. When we add these two steps together, we get that the delta H of the reaction is negative 550 kilojoules per mole. So now we found two ways of calculating the enthalpy change of the reaction, either by using the enthalpies of formation or by using bond enthalpies. Two important notes before we go. One, to use bond enthalpies, all of the species, the reactants and the products, must be in the gas phase. This approach doesn't work for solids and liquids. And two, if you have a choice, always use the enthalpies of formation. This is because bond enthalpies are averages for that type of bond for all molecules, which means that the values are not accurate. Enthalpies of formation, on the other hand, are exact values for a given molecule. 